It's part two of our all mode radio go bag. This time we're talking field radio computers. Well, this is John W7DBO with the Field Radio Channel, and thank you for clicking and tuning in on this part two of building a all mode radio go bag. So this week we're gonna focus on kind of conceptually building out a field computer. Now this field computer is different. I have uh, regular laptops, I have uh, Raspberry Pis, and I still plan on working on that project. Uh, I have little micro computers, uh, but what I wanted to do was kind of fit the need that's kind of unique for what I wanna do with field radio and digital operations. So what I did is I got a micro computer, which is kind of like a Nook, only much cheaper, and uh, put it inside a case and gave it multiple options. So versatility is the key to what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to uh, work remotely off of a tablet. I wanted to be able to work with a larger screen. I wanted to work with multiple screens. And uh, so this is kind of what I've come up with that seems to fit the bill for the goals that I want to do when I'm operating digitally in the field. Let me show you what I did. Okay, so on my desk here is the entirety of the system. So we have the radio that was uh, in the video before last week. I'll link that above, talking about how we're taking a ICOM 7000, partnering it with a Rig Blaster Blue, which is Bluetooth. And so now integrating this radio into my computer system or any other computer system is going to happen Bluetooth. So there is no USB connection between this radio and this setup, it's all going Bluetooth. So within relative distance, I could have this sitting somewhere else, hooked up to the antenna and power system, and then my computer setup could be uh, remotely done elsewhere. Or because it's Bluetooth, I could optimize just using a tablet uh, this is a Samsung Active Pro. Uh, I could use a native app on the Samsung to talk directly to the radio, completely cutting out the computer system. So as I go through this, you'll kind of see how I'm getting this modular, versatile approach to multiple things I want to be able to do. One of them is uh, having the radio set up with just the tablet and abandoning the rest of the computer system. And I'll kind of show how the tablet, you can see it's actually mirroring what's going on here. I'll show you that in a second. So let's get to the computer. So the computer is sitting inside a Pelican case uh, and it has an eight inch monitor up in here. I haven't drilled this in yet. That's why I say this is kind of a conceptual thing I'm working on. I'm just kind of fitting pieces together. Uh, so the, the brains of it is this microcomputer. Now this microcomputer runs on 12 volt. Uh, it's not a laptop, it's a microcomputer, kind of like a Nook. The reason why I like this one is because first of all, it runs on 12 volt and it's only pulling about one and a half amps and that's powering these monitors and everything. Uh, but what I like about it, it has three video outputs. So video output one, HDMI, comes up here to this eight inch monitor. This monitor is being powered by USB-C coming off the hub of the computer and the video signal is a mini HDMI and I had to go with a ribbon cable because I went through so many parts on Amazon ordering them and returning them trying to find something that would fit uh, between the case and the monitor. So that's what this ribbon cable is coming down into the computer. So that's video one. So the other thing I had to do was I had to try and get to my USB ports that are up against this wall. And so I had to do a fun little 90 degree, 90 degree adapter uh, to get to a breakout box. Uh, into the breakout box, I have my GPS sync for my time sync GPS, and I'm also powering the monitor. The other thing I'm powering is this yellow box. This yellow box is a local uh, wireless area network slash uh, uh, kind of VPN box. Um, what it does is when you go offline out of the world, this becomes your local uh, wireless hub. So I can now uh, Wi-Fi, I can Wi-Fi computers together, I can network them together. Say I'm using N3 FJP software, uh, now the different computers can talk to each other because of this wireless hub. Or I can get my uh, tablet, which is on TeamViewer right now, uh, so I'm able to connect offline uh, with my tablet, being able to emulate these two screens. So as I move my mouse around, you'll see that uh, it comes up um, I can do things with the pen tablet. And so this is another part of the versatility thing is 
Now I don't need, say here's my large monitor, here's my secondary monitor. Maybe I need the first monitor just to be able to boot up and log in. Then once I'm done with that, uh, I don't need a second monitor. I can just be on my tablet alone. So I have my tablet wirelessly connected to the computer and the computer Bluetooth connected to the radio. And so I'm eliminating a bunch of cords. Uh, so that's what this is. Now, because this is 12 volt and uh, reading on their forums with their engineers, they says it really wants 12 volt. It doesn't want, you know, 13 something. So what I did is I just simply put down in here a buck converter that drops it down to around 12 volts. And so uh, it makes the computer happy staying right at 12 volts. So right now, just conceptually, I'm just hooked up to a, uh, what is this, a, a six amp hour bio on a battery. Uh, just kind of running this whole thing right now. So uh, power source will always be separate. So I could grab this little battery. I could hook up to something bigger. Uh, I'm not going to build power support support into this because I want this to be modular. Uh, so this is just the computer box that is running everything. It has a keyboard. Now this keyboard is the Logitech. It's kind of their media center TV one. Everything I'll have linked uh, down below. Uh, the nice thing about this keyboard is it is touchpad and keyboard, and so um, it's it's plugged right in via a USB chip. And then also I have a Logitech wheel mouse, so say I want some more, say I'm in the trailer or I'm somewhere where I want a little bit more control than a touchpad, I can do that. And because these are Logitech, they're on the Unity receivers, and so I only need one receiver uh, to run both of them. Okay, so my second monitor, which is my large monitor, which is this 15.6, is Rotom. This actually came from a suggestion from Jason, uh, KM4ACK. He demonstrated this video, and it happened to be on Prime Day, so it was on a good deal. Uh, and so I snagged it. And so, like I said, all the links will be in the description below. Uh, for the Rotom, I actually went out and grabbed Jason's affiliate link, uh, just because it was kind of his idea of this monitor working for amateur radio. And so I'm using his affiliate link. Uh, so if you want to buy the monitor, click on the link in my description and uh, Jason will get credit for that. Um, what I like about it is, uh, you know, this, like I said, this can be used in many ways. I can use this with my laptop. I can use this with this computer. Uh, so this is going to be a really versatile option. Uh, one thing that was really good is it is USB-C video and power. And so I have a single USB-C cord going here to the computer. I had to do another 90 angle because everything runs out of room. So I did a little 90 degree angle and running off my cable. So a single cable is connecting uh, the computer to the second monitor, but everything else, the keyboard, the mouse, the tablet, the radio, uh, everything else is wireless. And so that's what I like about this is if I decide that I want to have a two computer set up, uh, I can do this, I can bring out the, the larger monitor, say I'm inside the trailer or I'm doing something where my eyes aren't really that good anymore. So I really want a bigger monitor. Say I just need a very small monitor to do something very quick like JS Call 8 or Activate a Park and I don't want to set up all of this. I just want to have my radio and I want to be able to have just a quick monitor uh, to be able to say log contacts or whatever. And so the other thing I have is I also have another keyboard that is uh, much smaller that will work with this. And it's a kind of, it was actually one that was kind of more used for uh, um, <laughs> uh, Raspberry Pis. I was trying to think of the name. Um, so I have it kicking around here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, so here's the smaller keyboard. So this little guy. Uh, it's commonly used for Raspberry Pis, uh, but it just has a USB card. So I have an open USB port. I could drop this in. So say I just wanted to have my keyboard uh, inside here. And so now I have a very simple keyboard to log in with this monitor, with this keyboard. I can log in, get TeamViewer running, and then everything else is, is running on TeamViewer. And now I also have an adapter cable, so I can use this keyboard and mouse with the tablet, but most of the time I just use the pen. Um, okay, so uh, everything is in the description below. Uh, all the, the links to everything, every little tiny part is. Um, like I said, this is kind of a project that I kind of wanted this for multiple uses. So uh, say it's field day and it's being the N3FJP server along with running, uh, you know, 
logging software and uh, running digital modes. Uh, I wanted it for, say, a POTA where all I need is um, simply this box uh, with this keyboard and I can do digital modes. Or even more simple, I'm going to do a POTA just with the radio only and if it's digital, I'm just going to take just this uh, tablet and run native apps on it and make all my contacts here. So this is a WinLink cert. This is a WinLink system. This is uh, all the software is installed um, for our RT systems. All of my radios that are programmable. Chirp is installed on here. Logging software is installed. You can see I'm running um, WSJTX. And the nice thing with two monitors is I can uh, use this small monitor for my band scope. And then I can use the large monitor uh, for contacts. So everything kind of fits up nicely inside a bag. I have, you know, different bags it goes in. Really, I'm not looking to kind of marry it to one bag. It's just really I have uh, this box and with some accessory items. Um, and then the radio is in its own separate bag, say, because I want to take the radio separately. So this is really just the, the method of my madness. I did find um, this nice neoprene. It's actually a laptop case, uh, and it fits the monitor and so I kind of put that in this case that way if I'm taking my laptop out or something else I can still use this secondary monitor uh, because it does have that USB-C it can also power off uh, regular power um, or it can power off USB-C and it also has HDMI and, and all the other fun inputs and so that is kind of this conceptually now this is all kind of conceptual like I said the monitor is still kind of just sitting there um, I can nothing's holding this computer in um, I can pop the computer out, so say it's getting hot, or this computer wants to just say go in my office. Maybe I want to just run this as a uh, dedicated uh, computer in my office and um, use TeamViewer on my regular computer to jump over and make some contacts. Uh, so this is kind of going to be a uh, shack computer too. So like I said, a lot of versatility, a lot of modular, a lot of portability, a lot of options. Um, I wanted to get the best bang for my buck because this is not, um, you know, compared to, you know, $60 microcomputers, this is not the, the cheapest of options, but this is the one that gives me multiple monitors, multiple setups, multiple options uh, in, a, in a nice small field portable package. Okay, that'll wrap it up for this video on my field portable computer, nice little tiny uh, computer there. So with that, uh, in the upcoming videos, uh, we'll go through kind of a shakedown test, get it off the bench, get it out in the field, and uh, see how it performs. So thank you for watching. My name is John, W7DBO with the Field Radio Channel. And as always, get outdoors and get on the air.